Esteban Ocon's latest move has shocked the entire F1 world, and it seems like the dominoes of the silly season just become more interesting. Although many anticipated that there would be repercussions for the 27-year-old Frenchman after the Monaco Grand Prix, not many expected that he would be leaving the team in a mutual agreement. Regardless, that is all in the past now, and the important question that needs to be answered is, who won this deal, and what is next for Alpine after they've lost yet another high-profile member in the matter of two years? It goes without saying that Esteban Ocon has been one of the most important members of Alpine, despite the negative reputation that preceded him in the past couple of years and culminated after the crash in Monaco. But be that as it may, he brought the majority of the points for the French squad in 2023, and in 2024 he was the one that performed better compared to Gasly, although the former AlphaTauri driver would have a word or two to say on that matter, as he felt like Ocon was always the prioritised driver. All of this goes to show that Ocon does not have any trust that the project in Alpine is going to improve anytime soon, despite him showing a lot of hope in one of the latest statements when it comes to continuing the relationship with the Enstone Bay squad. However, Ocon has given a subtle hint that the future of his career might change after admitting to talking with multiple teams and also saying that in the talks with Alpine, he has a couple of arguments to bring in his favour such as him winning a race for the team back in 2021 and a couple of podiums that elevated him to a competitive level. But all of this is kind of worthless to Alpine now because they have hit more or less rock bottom in 2024, failing to meet the weight limits with the A524 and a lot of aerodynamic goals that saw Harman and De Beer, who were the technical director and the head of the aerodynamic department, leave the squad as early as in the first race in 2024. When talking about the departure from Alpine, Ocon made sure to pay his respects towards the team with which he spent five years and also saw Alonso leave before him, which was perceived as a win for his driver profile. Further adding, we've had some great moments together, some tough moments as well, and I'm certainly grateful to everyone on the team for these memorable times. I will announce my plans very soon, but in the meantime, my full focus is on delivering on track with this team and having a successful remainder of the season. It is quite a political statement from Ocon if you to ask me, because Alpine are in the worst position they have ever been in in the past couple of years. So to think that any of their drivers is looking forward to improving the team's spirit, especially the one who has announced his departure, is the same narrative to believe if you were to ask where Hamilton's mind lies in 2024, and he would answer Mercedes. This is a ruthless sport that does not forgive nor forget underperformances. And while many were quick to bash Ocon for his bold move against Gasly in Monaco, rightfully so if we might add, it seems like the media is quick to forget that it was Ocon who brought the latest podium and race win for Alpine in Hungary 2021 and Monaco 2023. This put him in a position in which he can guarantee more experience and knowledge in the team that he was going to go with from 2025 onwards. And it seems like Haas is the one that's gathered the most attention from the Frenchman. The situation in the American team has started to improve in terms of consistency and scoring points, and after all they are related to Ferrari, so you can never say no to an opening from the senior team in Maranello. Obviously, the seat of Hulkenberg that has been left empty since the German signature with Sauber is now more or less guaranteed for Behrman, but there's another seat that Haas is more willing to give to a driver not named Magnussen due to the reckless driving of the Dane and the massive crashes that he's caused for the team this year. Paradoxically enough, it might be the 2024 version of Monaco that proves to be the last straw in the careers of Ocon and Magnussen in their respective squads. But be that as it may, Ocon won't be perceived as a non-talented and reckless driver on the grid. The squads that have the most interest in him see experience and talent. After all, you do not become a Mercedes protege all of a sudden. And while the Silver Arrows won't be giving their seat to Ocon due to the fact that they are ready to commit to Antonelli from 2025 onwards, as he is dubbed to be the next Verstappen, they could be putting a good word towards their customer team Williams when it comes to the future of the Frenchman. Another team that we would be paying close attention to is Audi, as the German manufacturer might want to bring a spicy duo of a veteran who shares the same nationality as the team, as well as Ocon, who will be bringing race winning and podium scoring experience to the team, something that Hulkenberg desperately lacks in his career. And even Audi has opened up about the future of Ocon, saying that he's definitely on their radar now that science is taking way too long to decide about his future, one that has been slimmed down to either Williams or Audi, two projects that are not looking good for the reputation of the three-time race winner. But be that as it may, Alpine won't be sitting still either. They have some very hefty replacements ready to rock and roll against the odds, and in this situation the team needs some young guns who will be able to prove that they are made out of F1 cloth. 
The first one is Jack Doohan, who finished third in the F2 season last year and managed to win three races in what turned out to be a very competitive season. And the other one is Mick Schumacher, who is currently driving for Alpine in the endurance competition and is now slowly but surely looking at a great opportunity to return to F1 after Mercedes have made their thoughts clear on a potential collaboration with the young German driver. When talking about the future of Alpine's lineup, one that is very likely to change completely for 2025 given the fact that Gasly is yet to sign a contract with Alpine beyond the current season, team boss Bruno Famin spoke about the opportunity of having Schumacher drive for him from 2025 onwards, adding, He is one of the possibilities, that is for sure. Like many others, Mick is currently doing an incredible job in our endurance program. What is very impressive is his mindset. Of course, he is very fast, but I think everybody knows that. It's not always useful to have very good lap time, because you have to have the balance of performance on top. You have to be a bit careful with the performance. Mick, from the very first minute, has been very, very cooperative and really helpful for his teammates. I'm very impressed with him because he's adapted to his attitude to endurance racing from day one. Everything is open for 2025, everyone is talking to everyone, and it would be a mistake not to have Mick on the list. The downfall trend in Alpine, however, doesn't seem to stop. If we were to look at some of the members who left the team from 2022 onwards, you'd notice some loud names, such as Alan Prost, who was a four-time world champion and was the special advisor for the team. He was fired under the regime of Laurent Rossi, but after the former CEO lost his job last year, many believe that Alpine has what it takes to turn things around. However, that didn't bode well after the miserable beginning of the 2024 season, one that just saw Ocon leave and a potential departure from Gasly as well. This goes to show that Oscar Piastri might have known something when he was promoted to Alpine without his knowledge back in 2022, and working out on that McLaren seat thanks to his manager Mark Webber might have been the best career decision that he could have possibly made. Obviously, the situation is all but great for the French squad, but all in all, the team does have some positives to look forward to. They have some great investment injection from an American-based fund that is compiled mostly from Hollywood stars and high-profile sports figures but in order to keep the money coming, they would have to show results. As of now, Alpine is only showing regress because they are literally going backwards and it would be quite impossible to believe that they could turn the tide around before 2026. Even then, the reputation of their engines is not something that they would bring in a fight against teams like Mercedes, Honda and Ferrari. So, therefore, the question of whether Alpine has what it takes to be competitive again remains to be answered. All in all, an interesting period lies ahead of us and it seems like Alpine would have quite a lot of questions to answer, starting from who will succeed Ocon to whether or not they can manage this crisis in a proper manner without restructuring the entire team yet again. What is more than certain is that they are on the downfall, and if the upgrades do not start to work, then we might be looking at Gasly's departure as well, who came here to win races and not to exit every qualifying session in Q1 and not even be close to the points finish in a regular racing manner. Where do you think Ocon will end up in 2025? And more importantly, who do you think is the proper replacement for the Frenchman? Let us know in the comments below and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.